Well, hello guys, here Mr. G with another video. This time we're going to be talking about titration and indicators. And the first thing we're going to be doing is speaking about what is titration and when do we use titration. Now, titration is a method that we use to determine the concentration of a substance knowing the concentration of another substance. And it's a method used which is an experimental method. So, titration is a technique used to determine the concentration of an unknown solution with a solution of known concentration. And remember something important. The solution of a known concentration is what we call standard solution. Standard solution is a solution where we know exactly the concentration of that specific substance. Now, what happened during titration? What is going to happen during titration? And let's go through all the things that happen during titration. The first thing that must be done is that a solution of a base with non-concentration is taken. So a solution with a non-concentration is taken. And this solution, remember, is called standard solution. Okay, so this is the first thing that must be done during titration. The second, okay, let's, let's, before we go there, let's note something here. This standard solution doesn't need to be a base. It can also be an acid. So it's a solution where the concentration is not. So let's do the following here. And write here base dash acid. So it's a solution of a known concentration. It doesn't matter if it's an acid or the base, but it must be a solution that you know exactly the concentration. Okay, so what is that? To that standard solution, we are going to add an acid. So to this one here, we are going to add an acid or a base. And we're going to be adding that one that we don't know the concentration. So this acid and base that we're going to be adding, we don't know the concentration. And we're going to add that one up until the um, standard solution is just neutralized. Okay, so this is what we have so far. We have a conical flask with a standard solution. Um, we remember the standard solution of an acid or a base. It does not really matter, guys. And we have a buret with a acid or base of an unknown concentration. Obvious, if the standard solution is an acid, if the standard solution is an acid, it's because we want to know the concentration of a base and we're going to use the neutralization reaction through titration, okay? Or the other way around. If the standard solution is a base, it's because we want to know the concentration of an acid, okay? So we're going to be open this key here, this tab there, so this um, substance that we uh, don't know start dropping in. And now something important, as this substance drop in, neutralization will okay. There is a video of, uh, that we make about neutralization. And then you measure the volume. So this is the first two steps we spoke here about um, titration. Now important, very important. These places can actually change. So for instance, the standard solution can be at the bottom and the acid base, uh, sorry, the standard solution can be on top, pardon, in the burette, and the um, acid base that we don't know can be at the bottom. It doesn't really matter. They can change places, all right? It doesn't matter how you do the titration as long as you work in this way. It means the standard solution doesn't need to be in the conical flask. It could be in the burette, okay? But it doesn't really matter. So this is the first two things that is going to happen or you are going to do during titration. Now, remember we said we're going to add up until just neutralize. So the number three important thing to note here during titration is that neutralization takes place when the equivalent point is reached. So neutralization will take place during this titration when the equivalent point is reached. Now, what is equivalent point? The equivalent point is the point at which the acid base has completely reacted with the base of the acid. That is the equivalent point and is very important definition. Now, an important point here. How do we know that the neutralization reaction has reached an equivalent point? How do we do that? We use indicators, guys. For this one, we are going to use indicators. 
To determine or to know when the equivalent point is reached, we are going to use indicators. Remember, indicators change color when the pH of the indicator changes. So we use indicators to know when the equivalent point is reached. And don't worry, we're going to speak about indicators just now. But before that, we're going here to number four, point four. Now, what is happening here? The eight point of titration is the point. We're going to use indicator to determine the end point, eh? which is not the same as equivalent point. Be careful. When the equivalent point takes place because of the end point of the indicator. Now, be careful. Don't confuse. Don't confuse equivalent point with end point. Equivalent point is the point when the acid base has completely been neutralized. We determine that one by the end point of the indicator. Now, the end point, not the indicator, end point of titration is when the indicator has changes the color. That is what the end point is. Okay, so when the end point is reached, titration is done. Now, this is titration, and titration, guys, is an experimental method. So, here, in this picture, you will know the volume. Now, we are going to be talking, this one is titration, eh? this one is titration by experimental process, but you can also use titration to do calculation, which is very simple. Now, if you want to do calculation of titration, there is a formula that you know it is given to you in the exams that say that the, co the concentration A multiplied by the volume A divided by concentration B multiplied by volume B is equal to Na divided by Nb. Now, this is calculation. This is titration calculation. So, whenever you do the calculation, it means you are not doing the experimental method. But if you do the experimental method, then you do not have to do the um, calculation using this formula. Now, important here I want to point out is that Na and Nb will be the ratios. We are going to be doing some questions, remember, not to worry. We're going to do some questions so you can practice this one. But here is more or less everything you need to know about titration. So titration is a technique used to determine the concentration of an unknown solution with a solution of known concentration, which is called standard solution. During titration, during titration experiment, the experiment. A solution of a base acid with a non-concentration is taken. You need it. You need the standard solution. Eventually, we're going to do an experiment to see how to prepare standard solution. Second, the standard solution of an acid or a base will be um, with a non-concentration is added until, remember I said it's added, but it could also be at the bottom. So when you have this set up, the standard solution can be either in the burette or in the conical flask. It doesn't really matter. So you are going to add one of the solutions to the other one up until neutralization takes place. And we know that that, that point when neutralization takes place is called equivalent point. We know when the equivalent point is reached because the indicator changes the color. When that indicator changes the color, we call that the titration is at end point or the indicator, indicator is at the end point. This is for the experiment. But we can also do calculation, which is this one here. And that formula is the one to do calculation. The formula is quite simple to use. Now, let's speak quickly about indicators. Now, indicators are substances that change the color when its pH change. This one is known by you all because you've done it in previous grade. You've done it in grade 9, guys. This one is grade 9. Nothing to say. All you know that, you use it. Alright? So, now, the indicator, you add an indicator to any substance and the change or the color changes. And that tells you if this substance is um, acid or base. Different indicators, colors are different. It depends on the type of indicator we are using. Now, during titration, remember we need an indicator right there for the end point. There are three main indicators we are going to be using here. We are not going to use all the indicators. So we're going to use only three. The first one we're going to be using is methyl orange. Methyl orange. Now, methyl orange has a pH range that goes between 3.1 to 4,4. That is the pH range 
for methyl orange, okay? Now, the color change is the following color change. Of the color of this indicator is going to be red for um, acid and yellow for bases, okay? So now that one is important to know here. That is the color change or the color according to where are you going to add this specific methyl orange? Now we're going to follow with bromothymol blue. The colors should be used uh, differently, but it's fine. Bromothymol blue have a range that is going from 6,0 to 7,6. This range, guys, uh, you don't have to learn, but you need to know that um, now in the video, you need to know the range, okay? The color of bromothymol blue is going to be yellow in acid and blue in um, bases. So that is the color of bromothymol blue, all right? And the last indicator we're going to be looking is a phenolphthalein, and this indicator has a range between 8,3 to 10. And now the color change for these specific indicators are colorless for acid and pink for base. These are the different indicators we are going to be doing. Methyl orange from um, bromothymol blue and phenolphthalein. This is the range which is very important and those are the color change. Also during titration you need to know that color change because it will help you to determine the end point. So now, when to use which indicator when, all right? So what are we going to do? If we have, if we have a strong acid plus strong base, then we are going to use, look here, strong acid and strong base, the pH of this solution must be uh, between 6 pH must be between 6 and 8 plus minus because it's a strong acid with a strong base. So the pH will be towards the 7, which is neutral. What indicator we are going to use here? Guys, between 6 and 8 will be bromothymol blue. Nothing to say is very simple. So if we have strong acid, and strong base, then we use bromothymol blue. Very, very important, guys. This question is going to be in the exam. You don't need to know the range, but you need to know that if you use strong acid and strong base, the indicator to use during titration must be bromothymol blue. All right, second one, strong acid and weak base. Second is strong acid plus um, weak base. Now, if you have a strong acid and a weak base, the pH here must be less than 7 towards the acidic side. So at the end, the end point will be towards the uh, acidic side. So the pH might be between 3 and 4. And therefore, we are going to be using methyl orange. In this case, we use methyl orange. And number 3 is now when we have a strong base and a weak Acid, so let's write here weak acid plus strong base. Now the pH is going to be between 6 and 9. It means that the end point will be greater than 7. And if you look here at the different um at the different indicators, we're going to use phenolphthalein. Let's uh, copy here and paste it on this side. I'm not going to uh, rewrite. So there is phenolphthalein. That one is the indicator to use then. Guys, this one is the end of this titration and indicators um, lesson. When you watch my videos, I suggest to get paper and get pen and stop videos and write some 
note okay that is the idea of this video but i hope it helped this one is everything you need to know about titration we are going to be doing some questions eventually we are going to be doing the experiment so please don't mess up that video of the experiment because it is going to be a formal for the grade 12 and we are going to be do everything here with all the values and all things you need but thank you for watching i hope it helped if it did help please thumb up subscribe for the channel i'll see you next time mr g here